potential difference. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to define potential difference, determine the potential difference in an electric circuit, relate potential difference with the output energy. How does lightning occur? During a thunderstorm, the clouds become electrically charged. This can happen when water droplets, ice crystals and other particles collide within the rising and falling air currents in clouds producing electrical charges. The positive charges or protons form at the top of the cloud and the negative charges or electrons form at the bottom of the cloud. Since opposite charges attract, that causes a positive charge to build up on the ground beneath the cloud. The electrical charge on ground concentrates around anything that sticks up, such as mountains, towers or single trees. Hence, an electric field is formed between the clouds and the ground. These excess charges in the clouds and on the ground literally ride the air molecules towards their opposite sides. The charge coming up from the ground eventually connects with a charge reaching down from the clouds and zap lightning strikes. The movement of these charges is due to the potential difference between the clouds and the ground. So what is potential difference? In order to understand potential difference in an electric field, observe the following. What is the force that opposes the motion as the book is lifted? Are you doing any work when lifting up the book? When you lift a book from a table, you are moving the book against the gravitational force. In other words, you are doing work against the gravitational force to lift the book up. Name the energy obtained by the book when it is at position A and position B. Compare the height and the energy at both positions. Which position has more energy? When an object is at a certain height from the ground, it has gravitational potential energy. The gravitational potential energy at B is greater than the gravitational potential energy at A because position B is higher than A. When moving the book from position A to position B, you are doing work against the gravitational force. And the work done from position A to position B is the difference in their gravitational potential energy. Hence, there is a difference in potential energy between positions A and B, and this difference equals to the work done in moving the object against the gravitational force. A positive charge is moved towards the positive plate in an electric field. What is the force opposing the positive charge as it moves towards the positive plate? Why? The opposing force is the repulsive force as like charges repel. Hence, when the positive charge moves from point A to point B, it will experience greater repulsive force. Between point A and point B, at which point do you think the charge has to have greater electrical potential energy? Why? The charge has greater electrical potential energy when it is closer to point B than at point A 
because it has to overcome greater repulsive force at point B. Is any work done when the charge moves from point A to point B? Work is defined as force multiplied by displacement in the direction of force. Hence, the positive charge is doing work because force is needed to oppose the repulsive force when moving from point A to point B. Work done on moving a positive charge between point A and point B equals to the difference in the electrical potential energy. The difference in the electrical potential energy is also known as potential difference. When a positive charge moves from the lower potential energy A to higher potential energy B, it is doing positive work or gain in electrical potential energy EPE. But what happens when the positive charge moves from point B to point A? Will it gain or lose potential energy? When a charge moves from higher potential B to lower potential A, the charge loses potential energy or potential drops. As energy is conserved, this energy is released into other forms of energy such as heat energy or light energy. What happens when a negative charge moves towards the gain or lose potential energy? A negative charge would have lower electrical potential energy at points of higher potential compared to the lower potential due to its attraction with a positive charge. Hence, the negative charge or an electron loses electrical potential energy as it flows from lower potential to a higher potential. That is why in a circuit, current I, which is regarded as the rate of flow of positive charges, moves from the higher potential, positive terminal, to lower potential, negative terminal. But electrons move in the opposite direction, that is, from lower potential, negative terminal, to higher potential, positive terminal. In both cases, the electric current, positive charges, or electrons, negative charges, will only flow in an electric circuit when there is a potential difference in the circuit. Thus, potential difference is defined as work done in moving a unit of charge between two points in a circuit. The work done is equivalent to the electrical energy to move the charge between the two points. Potential difference between two points is also referred as the voltage difference or simply voltage and is symbolized by V. The potential difference V can be summarized as V equals W over Q equals E over Q. W equals work done, E equals energy released and Q equals quantity of charge. The unit for potential joules per coulomb, which is also known as volts. One joule per coulomb equals one volt. What are the sources of potential difference in an electric circuit? One of the easiest ways to supply a potential difference between two points 
is by using a battery. There are many kinds of batteries. The main purpose of batteries is to supply electrical energy. A simple battery has two terminals, metal posts, that provide a means for connecting wires. Do you know which the positive and negative terminals are? The quantity commonly called the voltage of a battery is actually the potential difference between its two terminals. What is used to find the potential difference between the terminals? The potential difference between the two terminals can be determined by using a voltmeter. The voltmeter is connected parallel to resistors, bulbs or any other electrical components. It is important to note that when connecting the voltmeter, the positive terminal of the voltmeter, which is painted red, must be connected to the higher potential positive terminal of the battery and the negative terminal, which is painted black, to the lower potential negative terminal of the battery. What can you say about the readings of the voltmeter as compared to the voltages specified on the batteries? What can you say about the brightness of the lamps? Are they the same? Do you think they have the same output energy? Lamp A is brighter than lamp B. Thus, lamp A releases more energy. Note the ammeter readings. What can you say about the amount of current that flows in lamp A and lamp B? The same amount of current flows into lamp A and lamp B even though they are of different brightness. Note the voltmeter readings. Is the potential difference across lamp A the same as the potential difference across lamp B? How is potential difference related to the output energy? The potential difference is higher across the lamp that emits brighter lights or that releases more energy. Thus, these comply with the equation V equals E over Q. Potential difference V is directly proportional to the output energy E. The output energy represents the work done to move the charge between two points. The setup shown is a model that demonstrates the relationship of potential difference, charge and work done or energy. Each 10 cm level is labelled with its potential difference. The higher the level, the greater the potential difference. Each ball bearing represents 1 coulomb of charge. The model shows different amounts of charges at different energy levels. Where should the ball bearings be placed? to represent zero energy level. At the base of the retort stand, that is, at zero centimeter. How much energy is required to lift each coulomb of charge from the base of the retort stand to the nine volt level?
Nine joules of energy is required to move each coulomb of charge. That is nine joules per coulomb. Three coulombs of charge are lifted to the six volt level. What is the total energy of charges in the six volt level? The total energy is eighteen joules. Since there are three coulombs of charge in the six volt level, a total of eighteen joules of energy is released when the three charges drop to the zero energy level. How much energy would be released if the charges in the nine volt level fall to the six volt level? Six joules of energy. The potential difference between the nine volt level and the six volt level is only three volts or three joules per coulomb. Since three joules of energy is released by one coulomb of charge, thus two coulombs give out a total of six joules of energy. Observe the number of charges at their respective energy levels. Fill in the missing data in the table as shown.